Hello again, everyone. Today I am going to be swatching some hydrocolor watercolors on both white and black paper. So the black paper is the Moleskine black notebook that I have in my all black Sheik Sparrow notebook that I did a prior video on. I'll put a link to that video below. And then the white paper is just from Pentalic, I believe is the brand. So I have my hydrocolor colors in this Lucas metal palette. And for some reason, my swatches, I put them, here's the top row, and then for some reason I flip them for the bottom row. I don't know why I did that. Sometimes I can be a little dyslexic with things like that. So, um, but I'm gonna go through each of them and tell you what they are when I swatch them. And the brush that I'm using is just a Princeton round number 10. It's one I've used before and it's really good general overall brush for swatching. So I'm just gonna get right into it. And off camera, I do have a little container of water. And many of you may have heard of these hydrocolor paints. It's a shop on Etsy and they have really beautiful um, iridescent colors and they're really way more saturated than a lot of other iridescent colors. And I actually sh should probably compare those to to the fine tech or fintech. I think they're fine tech, pearlescent colors. I only have a few here. I've done some swatches on both white paper and black paper for those as well. So I think what I'll do is I'll put these down after I finish doing the hydrocolor colors, just so that you can kind of see the difference in the qualities between the two paints. Okay, so for the meantime, I'm gonna put those off camera. And I'm gonna put these here. Okay. So I'm just going to go in order. This first one is called Rhiannon, which is based on a song. Okay. They have a whole Stevie Nicks line. <laughs> so that's a Stevie Nicks song. Um, so I do tend to need to rub it quite a bit to get it on the brush. So I'm gonna start these over here. Let's see where you can see them. Okay. Oops, need some more water there. Okay, need a little bit more paint. Okay. And then I'm gonna do the same color on the black paper. And actually, I'm going to label these with the silver ink in the space pen that I have with us. So I'm just going to put up here Hydrocolor. And then I'll label these off camera later because that'll just take a little while to go through that. And I have not actually tried these yet on black paper, so this is kind of exciting. So this one is called Spellbound. Okay. Yeah, and you're actually getting a good sense of that on the camera here. So this next one is Seven Seas. Ooh, that's a beautiful blue. Okay. I think I'm just going to put three per line over here. But I'm going to be doing four per line over here just because of the space involved. So this next one is a Treyu from The Never Ending Story. I don't know how many of you have seen that movie, but it's definitely a classic kids movie. 
I've seen that probably more times than I can remember. <laughs> and to be fair, that's actually why I ended up buying that color, just because I was pulled in by the name. And this one down here, when we get to it, this is actually Falcor, so that's also from that. And my, I actually think my Cavalier King Charles Spaniel looks a little bit like Falcor, so I think that's pretty cool. This one is Mermaid Scales. And when I'm done here, I will move the paper around a little bit so that you can see the uh, shift in some of these colors that happens when you move them around. Okay. This next one is Fortune Teller. Yeah, those are showing up really well on black, actually. The last one in this row is Kelp. One thing to know about metallic or iridescent colors is that you really need, if you're gonna be using non-iridescent colors afterwards, you really need to change your water because all of this iridescent color will end up contaminating your regular watercolor. Okay, so now I have to flip this over for me to be able to see. So this one is Mirage. It's so interesting how differently they show up on the white versus black paper. I'm leaving a little room under each of these on here so that I can label them here. This is just for your benefit. This I'm gonna be keeping obviously as a, as a sample for these colors. This next color is Ariel, as in the Little Mermaid. And for the most part, I pick these colors based on the color, not the name, although, like I said, the never ending story colors, they did draw me in. And this one is Gypsy, another Stevie Nicks color. This next one is Bubblegum. Yeah, I'm kind of obsessed with these on black paper right now. They're so cool looking. This next color is Orin. sort of a goldish brown. There's more water there. The next one is Nugget, which is a pretty true gold color. And this last one is Falcor, like I was saying before. Really hard to make that out on the white paper, but I'm guessing that it'll show up pretty well on black. Oh yeah, that's pretty awesome. Okay, so that's the Hydrocolor colors on both white and black paper. And now I'm going to put these away, but I'm going to still keep this sample sheet that I have in my palette, and I'm going to get rid of the white paper. Put this off to the side here where you can still see it. 
And then I am just going to do the fine tech colors on black. But I will keep the white samples here. Mm, are you going to be able to see them there? Here, I'll keep them over here where you can see them somewhat. Okay. And these are going to be, I'm going to cover these up right now and hold them up out of frame or hold them up over the uh, hydrocolor colors and then we'll compare at the end. So I'm just going to go down. I don't know what the names of these are. And truthfully, I probably should have wet these before I began because it does take a little while for them to re-wet because they tend to be kind of hard. So this is a purple. Actually, I'm going to go through and put a little drop of water on each of these before we get there. Hopefully that will loosen them up just a little bit. And I didn't label these, so let me do that real quick. So these are All of that was to buy time so that these can moisten up a little bit. So this is a blue. And I can already tell just by starting here that these are not as strong as the hydrocolor colors. I guess I should be consistent and do three here in each row. And then this is sort of a grayish color. And as far as brands go for manufactured brands, I think that this is probably the most popular metallic iridescent watercolor brand. Oh, and I think this is just black. So that's probably I'm just going to make this a darker shade of black there. I think it does have some metallic in it. I'm trying to look at the sample here. Yeah, just a little, but not a lot. Okay. And I don't know how I would describe this one. This one's sort of in the pan, it looks slightly green but it looks brown when it's on the paper, both white and black, because that's this one here. Although on camera, it does look green. Oh, so funny. Okay, again, at the end, I'm going to move these a little bit side to side so that you can see the sheen. This is sort of a silvery, metallic. One thing I'm also noticing is that these colors seem to be a little bit harder to get out of the brush. Maybe that's because I have to brush a little harder to get the color off of the palette. And this one is a gold. And we can do some comparisons of gold too at the end here. And this is just a different tone of gold perhaps a little bit of a cooler gold, whereas the prior one was a little warmer. Although this one seems a little brighter. This would probably be more my speed as far as gold is concerned. Although I don't know, it is a cooler gold. All right. And then this is an orange. Sort of a reddish pink perhaps and then another reddish pink this is probably more pink than red ok 
Okay. So I'm not gonna let these dry before I show them to you, but I think that the Hydra colors are already dry. I'm gonna put that aside. And then I'm going to put, even with these together, you can see here that these Hydra color are a lot more vibrant. I'm gonna put my brush down. And then you're gonna be able to see, especially with this one here, there's a pretty big color shift from red to blue. And several others of these are gonna have the same effect. And actually, it looks like all of these are drying pretty fast, so there's only a few little wet spots left. All right. So let me know in the comments down below if you've used either of these, uh, which ones you prefer, and if you have any color recommendations for either brand. These are the ones I have. I probably won't get too many more than what I already have, just because I don't use metallic and iridescent watercolor that much, but I did want to go ahead and start doing that in this black book. So I thought this would be a good way to start off, just do a little bit of a test of the colors, see how they go on this paper. Seems like they go on really, really well. With this one, with the black, with the fine tech, uh, I think this is more of an undercoat. So you put down a black coat of this and then you could see these metallics more because as you can see, they do not show up as well on white paper. They're way more vibrant on black paper. All right. So that's it for today. Feel free to like and or subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.